Yes, very good afternoon to one and all. First of all, I thank the organizers of the program, participants, and the chairman of the session. So now I am going to present about the emerging Indian blue economy in terms of exploration, mining, desalination, and biotechnology. So basically, I work for National Institute of Ocean Technology, which is under the Ministry of Earth Sciences. Basically, we are a technology organization. We are developing technologies for blue growth. So as we know, the components of blue economy are mainly non-living resources, living resources, ocean commerce, and uh, response to the health of the ocean. So basically, it's a sustained exploration of the ocean in which the development has to be take care of the ocean health also. That is the crux of it. So the, what are the pillars of this blue economy? The main thing is that there will be appropriate governance, as my senior colleague told uh, Dr. Rajan. There must be appropriate governance for the sustained utilization of the thing. Then there must be proper vision. Then there must be proper technology. Then there should be a proper management for this. And there must be a monitoring system to take care of whether it goes as per the vision. And there must be time-bound uh, regulatory reforms. All these things have to be, to be parallel or to be in tandem, so as to achieve this one. That, that is why the blue economy comes into picture. Because originally it is called the ocean economy and marine economy. People may ask, what is meant by a blue economy? The concept of blue economy comes from the sustained approach. So coming to what activities and what it does is we develop basically technologies for harvesting desalination water from the ocean, ocean structures for construction, and we work on deep, deep sea technologies for mineral and mining from the seabed. Then we work on ocean observation, ocean acoustics, marine sensor systems, marine biotechnology. Basically, whatever the thing areas I showed, we are working on all these technologies. So as you know, India is a blue economy. It has no, the exclusive economic zone of India has more than 2 million square kilometers or a spread over length of 7,500 meters. And with the extended EEZ, now India will get a length of additional 530 kilometers. At that time, what happened to that? The Indian land area will become equal to the sea area and it has to be monitored and administered properly. So if we come to the blue resources, what are the things that are oil and gas? Huge amount of 50% of the national, national resources are located in the deep waters. Then there is something called gas hydrates, which is about one TCM is located in Indian waters. And then renewable energy, huge amount of renewable energy is there, which has to be tapped. Mineral resources, as I told, it is something like a polymetallic nodules, sulfides, and cobalt crust. Amount is there. Then we have infinite dissolution of uh, fresh water is there. These are the various resources. So if you see where are the resources located, basically this, this picture shows where it is located. Basically, polymetallic nodules is located in the central Indian Ocean. It is abyssal plain. And cobalt crusts are located at water depth around 4,000 meters. And hydrothermal sulfides are located in the southern Indian Ocean whose depth is more than 3,000 meters. Basically, India is allocated by the ISA, 75,000 kilometers in the central Indian Ocean and 10,000 square kilometers in the hydrogen thermal sulfides. So the basic thing is that we need technology. So without the technology, okay, people can talk. But when it has to evolve, technology has to, ready-made technology is not uh, available because uh, people, land-based resources other countries are having, they are yet to go into the ocean. But in India, there is a compulsory need to go into the ocean in the near future. So for this, and we have developed various technologies, mining machine, underwater mining machine to harvest mineral resources, which has been qualified up to 1,000 meter water depth. So to go to any part in the sea, we need underwater vehicles, remotely operated vehicles that we have developed and have qualified up to 6,000 meter water depth, mainly for mineral exploration. And the deep sea soil test, for example, if you build anything on land, we have to know the soil thing. Likewise, what soil strength and all, so that we have to have a vehicles to see how the soil behaves and we have a coring system for sampling gas hydrates and we have remotely operated vehicles to see the health of the ocean, how the coral reef is like that and all. So we have developed a polymetallic module machine which has been qualified at 512 meter water depth in the Malawian coast of India. It is by laying artificial nodule field and now it is system is augmented to 6000 meter water depth to mine the actual nodules. We are planning to have this in 2020 to do this one. This is the soil tester which is being developed and qualified at 6000 meter water depth. Wherever we want to know the soil status, it can be used to measure in situ. So this is a remotely operated work class ROV. So basically the system can be launched from the mothership at any desired point and it can, be, and it can go down up to the seabed up to any desired depth. After that, it is something like a satellite la launching and a satellite. So when it gets to the designated depth, what happens is the ROV goes out of the, this is an underwater vehicle, which goes out of the cage and it surveys and come back. So it, this was recently used for the AN-32 air crash, which went into the Bay of Bengal. So these are the these vehicles have gone into all, the, all these uh, mineral resources area, and these are the samples taken. So now we are continuing the exploration to map this one, and this vehicle also has the capacity to video stream in real time. For example, the vehicle is down in the deep sea, 
so experts will be at the top or on the land so the thing is that the video will be captured online and near real time it will be transmitted to the land so that people can see and the decision makers can make a decision so this, this whatever i told is unmanned vehicle which will be done from the top side so niot is developing or ministry of earth science is developing technology for manned submarine in which three people can sit inside the manned submarine can go up to 6000 meter water depth indian navy and other things have the submarines but can go a maximum of 400 meters but resource is not there at 400 meters for resource exploration we have to go to 6000 meters and this vehicle is designed for probably if it will be developed it is in the development of stage and another two years india will be having a man submersible and with this thing india will join elite club of uh, uh, top nations which have submersible only four countries are having and india will be the fifth country to have this one then our next resource is a gas hydrate which is being spread all over the different locations which formed by biological means as well as geothermal means so india is having a huge resource in the krishna godavari basin andaman basin and the andam and the mahanadi basin so for this we have developed we are developing and uh, technologies called autonomous scoring system which can sit on the sea but because uh, ships cannot be used for drilling because the water depth is more than 1000 meters it has to go long to the water column and then drill it ship stability the problem safety is of concern so uh, and moreover the ship is very costly so this system is designed to be kept on the sea bed and drill from the remote side with an umbilical cable and take the sample of gas hydrate basically for ground truth validation once the ground truth is validated and the special extent of the gas hydrates is known we can go for commercial exploitation ongc is now working on this uh, commercial exploitation of these gas hydrates with reference to the marine current potential india has a lot of marine currents mainly more focused in the andaman area because land we have a lot of energy but in the andaman no it's island thing we need a lot of energy so in every day i have carried out surveys and it can identify 2.5 meters per second water velocity and for which we are developing various turbines the problem in india is that water water currents are very slow slow actually so we have to develop turbines accordingly that is being tested and being developed and another thing is that ocean thermal energy conversion lot of temper because of the temperature difference between the top and the bottom of the ocean we can generate electricity by ammonia can be stored on the ship and the working fluid can be ammonia it takes the heat from the surface water and it can be condensed back to a liquid this is the thing and iot is developing a technology for this one and as a offshoot of technology we have developed desalination mainly for island nations where water has to be taken from the land or diesel has to be taken for producing the water by reverse osmosis this plant have been operational for more than 5 years the principle is the principle for this is the low thermal evaporation what happens is that under low pressure water will evaporate better and the thing is on condensed back what you have to do is that we have to put refrigeration pan instead of that we draw deep water we move deep water from the deep deep sea and we use it for condensing so we are the andaman administration and other islands have asked for six more plants it is in the development stages and offshore energy what we are doing is that we are working with the mnre non renewable energy national institute of indian energy with them we are working together because mnre has a capability for land based wind plants niot has a strength in sub sea so we are working for sub sea structures along with offshore this energy then coming to the my part this is also a very important area so niot being a technical organization in collaboration with other organization working on uh, micro micro or biological people we are developing technology for them we have developed uh, open cage sea cultures so the thing is that it can be used for uh, you know open sea cage where uh, ships uh, fishes can be bred in the natural environment in with this thing we have you know demonstrated various places olaikada in rameswaram and in many many places in port blair so we have got very successful results and now commercialization is going to happen soon and we are working on bio uh, bi algal biotechnology also in which various drugs from the sea are being produced and one of the unique facilities what we have in niot is the deep sea sampling and microbial facility as we know the deep ocean no we have lot of medicinal uh, uh, things are there so when these uh, uh, you know marine flora and fauna is brought to the surface the main problem is that at the bottom it is at 600 bar pressure once we bring it to the surface they will die the thing is that because what will happen they will explode basically because they are tuned to be under pressure so the thing is that this system what does it said that we can lower from the ship and it will take the sample in situ and it will hold the pressure at 600 bar pressure and it will come to the top side once it comes to the ship another facility is there what we can do is that in situ pressure we can transfer that into the experimental system so everything can be done under the uh, deep sea conditions so this is one of the things. so doing all these tests niot has multiple facilities we have the acoustic facility for uh, calibrating the offshore sensors and we have the hyperbaric test facility because to qualify all the systems no 600 bar we cannot take the engineering system down to 600 bar and fail and come back and redo the thing it's a cost of the ship time and all so this hyperbaric facility helps to simulate the pressure up to 900 bar 1.5 times at indian indian water depth deep sea water depth in india 
and then what happens the system has the capability that in case if there is a pressure loss of water entry it will immediately resolve the pressure so these are the various facilities what we have so in addition to this without we you know ships we cannot do research so we are having four different vessels sagarnidhi is the flagship of nivot it's a technology demonstration vessel it's mainly for demonstration of the technology it is a bigger ship 120 meters long and we have the ship called sagar manjusha which is also a deep sea going vessel and sagar tara is one of the vessel which we are now building and it is being inducted now and another replacement vessel for sagar purvi is being built the flagship vessel is sagarnidhi is a technology demonstration it can go up to polar conditions so these are the various capability and the conclusion what i would say say is that from the technology per se the thing is that we are getting more ease at zone and we are now into the sea the thing is that we have to develop technologies for exploring and exploiting the resources sustained harvesting has to be done taking into account the robust you know indian economy now we are having the 2.5 trillion indian economy and it is expected to grow at 7 percentage this can catalyze the growth of indian economy that is an advantage then consistent efforts has to be there to go ahead with the blue resources then long term capacity building has to be done then as a indian uh, india is the leader of the local region uh, indian ocean rim association so it's cooperating with other countries to bring in blue economy into uh, to get together no it's a uh, no joint growth actually it's not only india is growing it's a together no together growth so this is what i want to conclude and thank you for giving me an opportunity to explain what are the technologies being developed in india thank you